this is a cool thing about rocking rock hounding with other people man they find good stuff and everybody shares the the excitement at the discovery right and what kathy's finding oh my goodness i'm very happy for her. it's it's great right um you know like you look at something and it's like i'll never find much here but i'm following the signs and then suddenly bang out it comes uh, I, I just can't wait just a little bit longer and she's going to pull out even better stuff because the plate she's just at the top end of the plate it's a, it's like a hollow sphere and she's extracting uh the crystals which jut into the hollowness of the sphere right oh Check out what Kathy just found. Look at these. Look at that. Isn't that absolutely beautiful? And she says there's more in the pocket, right? They're just quartz points, but they're really nicely formed. I like that. Amazing, Kathy. Look forward to seeing what else you find. Right in quick succession after Kathy's discovery, I've just managed to uh, knock off this piece of feldspar here, which is in part... Uh, limiting my ability to get into the into the hole properly but again it's quite nice you put your hand down you can feel the crystals facing downwards so it's like a uh, an actual pocket it's filled with dirt she's just clearing it out but uh it's something like what you would absolutely find it like you can see the other ones she's got out here a lot of them covered in dirt and stuff but whoa look at that kathy's just hit the jackpot man i guess going down the side of this you know, this is all you can see all the feldspars uh, all the way down and then boom, into the quartz pocket. Got to be a decomposing calcite or something down there. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my God. Oh, unbelievable. Oh, my God. That is beautiful. Stunning. Look at it. Yeah. Wow. Oh, wow, Kathy, you've got... This is just that morning sun coming up glinting on the quartz sharp as can be I just can't believe that look at the smoky quartz in the background and the lovely sort of clear quartz you know it's almost like Herkimer's like these these clear ones are are so very clear I can tell once it's actually washed with Dawn and dish soap it's gonna just be phenomenal you are into some good stuff today Kathy there's a pyroxene how do you know it's a pyroxene have a look at it from the top almost square edged like in other words it appears almost 90 degrees between that angle and that angle right you see it look at this okay here's a uh, again another pyroxene there's only pyroxenes coming out of this uh, fissure that Kathy's been digging and then look at all of the like little bits of quartz like beautiful little plates of quartz and she's got a big plate down there that she's working on right now so I mean this is what tipped us off to start with was the feldspar along this rock and leading downwards so it's suggesting to us that there's something better further down and sure enough it looks like the feldspar stopped and now she's into the quartz so who knows how far back this way it could go so guys people say that uh, I don't show enough of the finished um, finished product when we find it right so again from the the fissure that Kathy's been digging you look at some of this stuff right it is absolutely spectacular, right? Weird thing about this one is the transition between the white quartz and what looked like a smoky quartz, but now what we're discovering is this quartz is actually covered over by what we'd call a botroidal hematite. And botroidal is a Greek word coming from the word grape. And it looks like grapes when you see it up close, right? That's the particular formation that you're seeing there botroidal hematite and then the very coolest thing of all in my opinion is stuff like you probably can't see it I'm going to put some stills up just to do a better job can you see those spheres inside the uh, the actual prisms right those spheres are again what I think is the hematite and we've got the red hematite and then we got the black stuff as well much the same product um, just different oxidizations I believe so yeah, this is an example of finished product, right? And of course, she's just at the top of the fissure right now. She's just beginning the work. And of course, in the background, you can see some really lovely uh, tremolite. Um, just the most beautiful green on it. Look at that, eh, for a green on the hematite. Um, 
but and this one here's another good example green on sorry green on the tremolite um, but again she's uh, she's at the top of the fissure and God only knows how far it goes down or how far up and down the hill it goes so that's our next step I'll just show you some of the stuff in Mark's cabinet here eh? and this is all gathered out of the dark star property all of it look at that eh? look at that for some would call that a, a nice example of um, I would guess even possibly a fluorocterite just looking at the potential cross-section of that but anyway enough on the cabinet for now I'm very much looking forward to the next trip up there which is within a day or two ah, it could be it could be okay so it's the the idea is progressing further you've got the quartz on top of the hematite layer you can see the black layer and then there's this yellow layer and again there's your yellow layer right there there's your yellow layer like sort of powdery yellowish then the hematite and then the quartz on top of it with the inclusions right hey guys very buggy Thursday Mark and I uh, we're working the same area where Kathy was where she found that amazing um, uh, those amazing quartz crystals with those beautiful beautiful inclusions so there's where Mark is I'm on the other there's side of the right rock oh yeah there we go there's one he's found one not as many as we expected nevertheless right um, definitely not as many but uh, we're finding other things which are quite interesting and this being an example this is a big lump of calcite you pretty well know with it with the ore guide or whatever is meeting the the calcite you're going to be finding some crystals so I'm nibbling away at the calcite and I'm starting to find these they almost look like the tops of octahedrons possibly not because on the one hand they look I can see aspects of feldspar with them but on the other hand again you can see that you know would that have been a pyramid and then cleaved off at the top I mean that's a that's a zircon kind of characteristic right but it's not uh, I'm going to keep nibbling away I can see there's some feldspar there um, and there's some further oh Mark got some yeah. nice points eh there's some nice points look at a glitter on that just beautiful we're just trying to figure out the layout of the rock you know and how the the veins are working here so we know what we're finding but oh yeah there's some nice pieces under here I can tell oh yeah just apply the brush to it and look at this here's what's behind the calcite important lesson there guys calcite is your friend okay brush it off brush it off brush 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 hmm this is improving by the minute so the question is when we're looking at the inclusions in the quartz is this magmatite or hematite well the reddish decomposition definitely points in the direction of hematite uh, and then if you play around with the words heme as in hemoglobin red uh, it's kind of the root of root of hematite right so hematite hematite will streak red on a you know a streak plate whereas um, magmatite will be a black or a dark brown right so again you see the layers with the quartz you can see the quartz here you can see the 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 mineral the the version of iron that it is so the hematite is Fe203 whereas the magmatite obviously it's more magnetic and also it's um, uh, Fe2 Fe304 and it's gonna form as an octahedron more likely whereas the hematite um, not so much so it's a trigonal it's a trigonal crystal in, a, in its crystal form right so I've been I've been at it for about a half hour and I've managed to basically chip away a lot of the calcite it comes off quite easily um, you just got to be careful as you start getting up against the edge of the uh, the feldspar crystal so this is basically feldspar with pieces of calcite within it the question is how am I going to now remove this I'm going to probably try and break the rock here and hope that it doesn't do a lot of damage to the feldspar he's just gone gone to town on this wow 
So you can see all you can see how it was when we started. This is all we could see, and now he's down that far. That's some serious tunneling. Not bad for a one-handed digger. Yeah. <laughs> he's not wearing his sling. Bad no. boy. <laughs> bad. It'd be brown. <laughs> uh, yeah. Kind of small, almost a geode-like looking thing. Right? Of course there's just some sort of really weird stuff going on there. I don't know what you'd call it. He says it's he calls it skeletal, skeletal quartz up there. And then you've got your your points down lower down there, right? But anyway, um this doesn't look quite as included as the stuff Kathy was finding. But if you're talking about inclusions, right? <clears throat> you got a couple of basic categories of inclusion. So we're looking at this, as I say, these spheres of probably magmatite or hematite in there. Uh, the quartz has basically engulfed these spheres. So you would call that, that's an example of something that's protogenic, right, is in terms of an inclusion. Protogenic means the inclusion was formed before the encasing material covered over it, right? Then you've got um, uh, syngenic, synogenic, which is basically the inclusion and the um, the actual encasing material formed more or less at the same time. And typically you'll see the, the inclusions will be pretty pretty random when you see it like that, right? They're, they'll be randomly oriented. And then the last sort of major category of inclusion, excuse the bugs here by the way, but the last category of inclusion would be um, epigenic. So when we call it epigenic, that means that, uh, say, there's been a, an element that's been included into the crystal lattice, and then as the crystal uh, is uh, given either a different pressure or temperature, at that point, the actual um, inclusion forms, usually along the crystallographic axis. So, like, for example, you might think of something like um, rutile inclusions in, say, a, a sapphire. Right, uh, that that would be an example of of um, epigen epigenic 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 uh, epigenic. Uh, okay, read it right here. That type of inclusion, the last type of inclusion, um, as I say, along the crystallographic axis. The other examples would be somewhat randomly oriented. You may see, uh, for example, a magmatite in a spinel. Right. That's, that is something that is, you know, it's an octahedron. It sits nice and clear within the spinel, and that would be an example, again, of protogenic, right? So different kinds of inclusions. We're still investigating. If somebody has an idea as to exactly what we're looking at and how it formed, let us know, right? I mean, we're not the sole experts. I'm sure there are people out there that are far more knowledgeable than I am on, on the topic of inclusions, but if you are interested in inclusions, uh, there's a book by uh, Gublin that I've got, Photo Atlas of Inclusions. Great, great book. Sadly, it does not have the type of inclusion that we've got with the quartz. Show me. Yeah, that's super nice. Look at that one. Whoa. Beautiful, Mark. Yeah, we'll get her cleaned up. She'll look good. Excellent. How are you finding them? Like, what's the... They're upside down in the floor, so I'm just barring through the floor and, and you then, got a layer uh, pop, there popping it up with the yeah. shovel and flipping it over and seeing what's good and what's not and you have a layer yeah i got a big layer you're three feet from me and i do not have the same layer no you're even green yeah mine is completely green and red i got a packed layer in there it's just like a i don't know a foot and a half and uh -huh. then there's a floor i'm busting through the floor and that layer and the the quartz is just mixed in with it wow wild eh yeah <laughs> The bucket was there, it rolled down and all my specimens roll all the way to the bottom. And not that we need it, but the bug spray punctured and just sprayed out everything, right? Uh, I don't know, there's, well maybe we do need it, there's an awful lot of bugs here right now. So we got the big boulder between us, it's turning into quite a... Quite a little mine here. We're working for the last little while. So all along this ridge, undercut, it's got all kinds of goodies. I mean, basically what I'm finding down here and what Mark's finding on the other side, two entirely separate 
mineralogical deposition areas. Um, yeah, I, I can tell it's there's been a lot of uh, superheated water coming up. You get this almost like a scaling on the rock, uh, as I said, like like somewhat like your kettle, um, and that's indicative of the superheated water coming up and just you know laying out some deposits. One-handed digger. What are we looking at? What can a one-handed digger find? Uh -oh. oh, nice. <laughs> there we go. There's a nice find. Yeah, that's nice. That is beautiful. Mark. Man. So if you done, I wouldn't mind a close-up of that. That was under the calce, yeah. There we go. Look at that. There's a nice druzy piece of quartz, as they say. <laughs> Beauty, let me take oh. a picture. Another nice little guy. Beauty. Look how sharp that All is. All of that really? coming out of the pocket. Quartz tends to come in pockets. That was under the calcite. Really, eh? The rotten calcite, yeah. And then we've got all that sort of hematite stuff that's decomposing down there. What do you find? Oh, <laughs> very nice. Little buggy guy, eh? Yeah, a bit of hematite staining on it, too. Probably some nice inclusions. You got it? You... Yeah, I just got to get it with the shovel. Uh, get is, it that, in. Is, is this the best a one arm man can do, brother? This is the best a one arm man can do. Oh, my goodness. Let's brush that off. A one arm man can do a damn good job, clearly. Oh, yeah, that's a very That'll clean nice up nice. One. I like that, yeah. man. Okay. There's two huge pieces in there. Oh! No, it's not even on the shovel. The shovel's nice. Oh. The shovel is nice. Oh, this is covered in the botroidal, botroidal hematites. Look at it. Look at it. Do, 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 do. Beauty. <laughs> I'm not greedy, man. It's all good. Oh, you're very decent. You might want to. Yeah, I might want to get another piece or two. Yeah. Can you pile these up there for me? Yeah, I'm just going to stop this. Look at that.